Welcome back to Florida Naturally, and we are in Sarasota. I'm here with John Pether. Hi, John. Hi there. How are you doing? Tell us where we are. We are at the Moat Aquaculture Research Facility. It's called the Moat Aquaculture Farm, and we're about 15 miles from Moat's actual headquarters that it's on the ocean, but we're inland on, on a farm. And you actually have a research facility here raising sturgeon, right? We're not only raising sturgeon, but we're also raising some snook, and uh, we've been raising pompano as a test animal as well. All right, well, let's go have a look. Okay, let's go look at it. All right. We're coming into the, uh, the snook research section here, and we are actually breeding snook in these tanks. No one has ever been able to breed snook in tanks before because the females get so tense. It turns out female snook are very particular about breeding, only breeding at full moon and new moon. So they have to be fooled with artificial moonlight to lay eggs. Once fertilized by the males in the tank, the eggs are siphoned off, hatched, and then the baby snook are grown to about 8 inches and then released into the wild. The hatchery is entirely managed by computers, from feeding to temperature control to water quality. If the computer finds a problem, it auto-dials an alert to a technician's cell phone. Why all the fuss over sturgeon? Because of the caviar. We don't get that price, but if you go on to the site Petrosium of Paris, they are the Cadillac caviar dealers in the world. Their New York site buys all of our caviar, and our caviar sells for about $2,600 a pound. Okay, we're in the hatching room here. We bring in eggs in plastic bags, as I mentioned before, but we have to hatch them in very cold water because the sturgeon is genetically a cold water fish. Every six weeks we move them once they've been hatched and we increase the water temperature just a little bit, two degrees centigrade, and after about nine months they're swimming around in tepid water going, Florida ain't so bad after all. This is where they come after they've been uh, born in the, in the larva room and they'll stay here in this hatchery section until they're about nine months old. This is where we are training them so that they become used to living in tepid water. We've kind of got backed up a little bit and we just had a birth of 30,000 babies, so all of these are actually about the same age. We've got 30,000 uh, that were born in January. Okay, we're gonna go in to a grow out building. Like I said before, these are 26,000 square feet, so you're gonna see they're huge, and this is what a farmer would build. This is a full scale commercial grow out building where the fish will grow from one year anywhere up to about seven years old. So let's go on in and... To give you some idea, uh, the hatchery that we've just left with the administration buildings and a farm with a couple of grow out buildings like this and a food processing section, it would cost, uh, including land, probably five to six million dollars or a farm with four of these grow out buildings is about a $10 million investment. This entire building is automated. You can see the feeders there. And then over here, the, the feed sacks get hung up. The computer system that we saw before will instruct the feed system to begin working. The feed will come up through the, the pipes and automatically down into the hoppers. So we don't need any human intervention. You have in this building 32 of these tanks. Each tank is 18,000 gallons. And each tank can take, depending on the size of the fish, between about 400 and 900 fish. These are two-year-olds, uh, and we've got 1,500 fish in this tank. Um, so they're probably all, they're, they're probably a combination of male and female, and we'll be getting ready to, to divide them and sex them soon. The way we sex the, the sturgeon is we use an uh, endoscopy unit and to make sure that it's done painlessly, we put them on an operating table. We uh, stun them with uh, cold CO2, so they're basically anesthetized. It only takes about 30 to 40 seconds for the process, and we go in with the endoscopy unit, and it will display on a screen if there's over with eggs there, and then we know whether they're male or female. Some of the, the, the design features of this building that may not be obvious is that uh, it's designed to try and control disease. Disease is, is a problem in any kind of farming. So we'll have four tanks to one filtration system and we'll never share the water. The other thing is we put the fish inside a building to try and mitigate airborne disease coming from birds or just windborne disease. So we protect the fish by keeping them inside here. The other thing we've done is we've eliminated uh, any air conditioning in this building. We use a very simple airflow, sucking air in from the outside, flowing it across these tanks, and the evaporation cools the air, 
and this building will stay probably within 8 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit summer or winter without any uh, cooling mechanisms at all. When you see a, a, an animal tagged, it means it's a female. She has a serial number on her and that's going to stay with her all the way through even to the point when we uh, take the caviar and pack it that female serial number is going to be on the can of the caviar. These are probably six to seven year old females and they're probably weighing in at around uh, 20 pounds or so. Since everything is driven by electricity at this operation, a massive on-site generator can keep it running during an emergency. The final step for these farm-raised sturgeons is to process the fish for restaurants and then separate the valuable caviar eggs for the world market. Petrosium sell this online as well as through their, their wholesale uh, outlets, but uh, if you go online to Petrosian of Paris, it's www.petrosian.com, you'll see Moats Caviar being sold there on their website under the name Royal Berry Sturgeon. Berry is the name for Siberian Sturgeon. They call it Royal Berry Sturgeon. And it, uh, a can like this, which is uh, about a pound, uh, retails at about $2,600. John, that was a terrific tour today, and uh, you are a nonprofit research facility, and uh, obviously you have a very expensive project going on here. Uh, how is it funded? Well, uh, we, we depend on grants from, from federal and state government and from private foundations and from individuals. Uh, unfortunately, uh, federal and state government money hasn't been that readily available, so we really depend on individuals who care about the ecology and about nature and about fisheries to help us out and uh, we also write uh, grant applications to private foundations so if anyone is involved in a private foundation and thinks what we're doing is worthy we would love to hear from them and uh, uh, we would be happy to write a grant proposal. And the other thing is this is a terrific business opportunity for somebody if they want to do uh, sturgeon aquaculture themselves, right? Yes, it is. And we've finished a complete business model to show farmers how much they need to invest, what they can uh, get as a rate of return. And we're hoping uh, October 30th actually is a date that's been set aside. We're hoping that Charles Bronson, our Commissioner of Agriculture, is going to bring people from out of state and in state farmers and food companies down here to show them what Florida is doing. Okay. Well, thanks and good luck with that meeting. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right.